We learned about generic methods and we learned about match. What is the relationship between both of them? Is there any instance where we could choose between one and the other? And what are the pros and cons? That's what we're going to cover in today's lesson. So let us consider this example of serialization. You are familiar with it. You've used it in your own homework assignments. Uh, and you've also done it in homework two, right? So the idea is we have some abstract syntax tree and we want to be able to serialize it as code. Let me give you an example. So here is this. So here is an example code. What do we have? We have values, numbers. For values, you only have numbers. And then we have expressions that could be either let me format this code for you. Okay, so they could be either a value, an expression could be a value, a variable, or an apply. So a variable just takes a name, and an apply just takes a function and the arguments, which are their fields. So if we want to be able to serialize this code, that is uh, converted into an S expression, we could perhaps implement this function called r colon quote. So what does r colon quote do? If I give it, actually, let me copy paste some examples that I have here. One, two, So let's see if this even runs. Okay. So what does it this do? This function is very simple. It it basically we have two base cases. If the expression is either a number or a value, just return not that you should return. Ah, we are using already match, so we're unpacking the actual expression, right? So we're saying if we see a number, then return that number. We see a variable return that symbol and if we see an apply where we have ef and ea then what we need to do it's very simple we need to recursively quote all the arguments and we quote the function so we just do a cons of the function the quoted function and then whatever arguments we have they're all quoted so this is how you would go about and implement quote for an AST using match. As you can see, it's very clean. Only three lines of code to represent what we want. Uh, and then it does what we expect, right? So if we give it a number, if you quote that, you will get the number. Uh, so if you quote a variable, you get the symbol. And if you get, if you quote and apply, let me, um, If we quote and apply that is doing um, foo and it's passing arguments 10 and x, then I would expect it to recursively quote each of these three things and you would get that. Um, so because the whole thing passes, it means all the um, code was parsed as we expected, but just so you are convinced, I will quote this term just so you see it output it. As you can see, it prints out foo 10 and x, right? As we expected. So let me comment this out. The same functionality could be achieved not by using match, but instead by using a generic, as we've learned. So generic methods. So how would we do that? Let me guide you through the code that I have. So we would define our value and our expression as before, so nothing changed. What do we do now? Now we create a generic method called our quote. And as we've learned, uh, we specify the name of the generic interface, if you will, um, and we specify where the generic uh, argument is located. So in this case, it's located in the first argument. So we're just saying that we are defining function uh, our quote to dynamically dispatch on x. 
Okay, so X is dispatched dynamically according to its type. So we need to give the type using a structure, right? So if we want to say that X is a number, we need to write methods and say which methods it's implementing. So we're, we always use the um, gen colon um, notation, and then we use the name that we defined as a generic. So it's gen colon which generic quotable. So that's what we write here. And this we already learned in the previous lesson. So I hope you understand what is happening on, on each of these methods. So now what I'm doing is I'm implementing quote for number, and then I'm going to implement quote for variable. And finally, I'm going to implement quote for apply. As you will see, that the only non-trivial case is apply. So let's see, how would we do it for number? Well, for number is very simple. What do we do? We define the extra method. There's one, you can define more than one, as you know. Um, so quotable only defines this single function. So we're fine. We just have to have a list with a single definition of our quote. What do we do? Well, now we have n, and n is an expression, as you know. So um, what do we need to do? We need to call the field directly. So it's a bit uglier than just doing a match, right? In the match, you just give the structure and you return the value. Here, I need to actually call the field, the accessor field, uh, which in this case is called r colon number minus value. Um, and then if I want to get the value of it, I just call quote r number. And it the way you use the function r quote is exactly the same. So if I want to call it r quote and I pass r number 10, that returns um, example 2. It returns number 10. So if I change this to 100, I will see 100. So what happens if we pass a string, which is undefined? We get a contract uh, violation, which is basically saying that it is expecting a type quotable. So what is quotable? Quotable is exactly what we defined here, right? So it works as a type. So we can even do is um, quotable our number. See if this works. Okay, so the number 10 is quotable. Um, is, is the number 10 quotable? The literal 10 not quotable? No, it's not because it didn't implement that generic method, right? So the only way to create something quotable is by creating a struct and defining the method gen quotable. So that's what we did. So I've showed you how to implement number. Um, implementing variable is basically the same thing, but uh, it shouldn't be variable is name, right? How do we define how we call it value as well? So then if we want to do, so now if I want to do our quote, our variable foo, I get, Sorry for the background noise. Okay, and then we have our apply. Our apply, recall the implementation, our apply would just do cons of quote and then map our quote with all the arguments. So you're not, the way you have, you have to recursively call quote, right? So how could we do that in, with a generic method, right? How do we call uh, the generic definition. If we just did, because we are defining quote, right? But we are defining quote for this specific type. How do we get the generic quote for all types, right? So if we just did, let me just show you what happens. If we were to just write our quote. Okay, so if we just write it this way, you won't get it right. Why? Because um, our quote is exactly just this function, right? So if I call it recursively, I'm expecting the argument, in this case app, to be an R apply. Why? Because I'm calling this field, right? So if I call R quote, you are just calling this 
this, the implementation that you are providing. You are not talking about the generic quote, which is what you would like to do, you know, because your um, function of the of the uh, function application, so the the field func, could be anything. Could be a number. Could be a variable. Uh, it could be another apply. But what you need then is not the implementation of quote for apply. What you need is the generic implementation of quote. And the way you get this is with this special constructor called define slash generic. Okay. And what you give is the name of the variable that you want to assign it to. And then you say, give me the generic version of our quote. And that is going to be assigned to, in this case, I wrote it recursive quote. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to recursive. I want to call the, the generic version of a quote. And I want to apply that to apply func and now to every element of apply arcs. So now if I call my code, you will see that it works. So let's see our apply, uh, sorry, our quote, let me copy paste it just so you can see. I run this. Now I see that I got quotes. So, okay, so that's pretty fine. We can see already a few differences, right? The code using match is way simpler. It's just these three lines. Whereas to reproduce the same behavior, I had to, you know, create this this all of this boilerplate plate, just saying methods and quotable and scatter the code around so this is the branch for number and then the branch for variable is here and then the branch for um the branch for a function application is here so it's way harder to get a global picture of what's going on right you don't really know the whole code unless you look at all places that implement quotable so this is already a big ma a major difference right uh, whereas here it's three lines of code how, how hard could this be to maintain? This is just a plain old recursive function with a match, whereas here, um, well, there's you have to understand what are generics, you have to understand where the code is, you have to look at all the code to understand what's going on. So it's a bit more daunting, right? There's a bit more maintenance overhead, if you will. So we looked at this, we looked at why we need the the um, recursive quote where is it ah here it is recursive quote um so just to recap we we learned before that we can specify where we want to do the generic where where the dispatch is going to happen is it going to happen on the second parameter and the first parameter and these are two examples just to use just a recap of generics uh, but we've learned that in a previous lesson so um, in the next video what we're going to study is basically how can we extend um, what happens to our code once we add another element to our ast what is the impact of that